There's a lot of you out there looking to create more video content in 2023, and a vast majority of you have a case of gas. Yeah, that wonderful case of gear acquisition syndrome. You're trying to figure out what cameras to use to upgrade your video content. And I'm here to tell you that if you're looking to invest in cameras, you're looking to invest in the wrong place. All you need is your phone. This is an iPhone 12 Pro. We're a couple years removed on this model and I can create video content that looks and sounds just fine. But if you do want to upgrade things, I'm really going to suggest upgrading your audio quality. Because at the end of the day, that's what's really going to matter. If your video is a little suspect, but your audio is fantastic, then people are going to tune in as long as the message that you're delivering provides some value. Now, I'm going to go through some upgrades and I'm going to do this a little weird because I just told you not to upgrade your camera, but I'm going to switch over to my upgraded camera. And I'm doing this because it's just more comfortable for me. I can sit at my desk. I got a whole bunch of microphone options around here for you. You can see everything better, but you're still hearing the iPhone audio right now. It doesn't sound too bad. I haven't even made any corrections in post. But one of the first things that you might be looking at to upgrade, especially if you already do have a half decent camera, DSLR, a mirrorless style camera, is one of these little guys. This, if my camera wants to focus, is the Rode Video Micro. It has this little adapter here that slips into the hot shoe or cold shoe on a camera. This can be had for, I don't know, I think I paid $60 for it. So right now, let's go ahead and switch over from the audio coming from the iPhone to the audio coming from the Rode Video Micro. How does this sound? Did we upgrade our audio? Was that $60 worth spending? I'm not sure. I haven't listened to this back yet. If I have any super valuable notes, I'll toss them up on the screen right now. But this is what a $60 upgrade to your audio would look like. And they do make a version of this that you can plug straight into an Apple device or an iPhone. The typical jack on the standard model is a three and a half millimeter, basically standard headphone style jack. So you should be able to plug it into any of your Android devices. And of course it works on basically any DSLR or mirrorless camera with video capabilities these days. But if you are a member of the Apple ecosystem like I am, then you want the version with the lightning connector that you can just plug straight into your phone. So if you did plug that straight into your phone, you would get a result that looks and sounds a whole lot like this. This is video from my iPhone and audio from the Rode Video Micro. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Uh, do a quick Google search for the little teeny thing. It's the smallest on-camera microphone that Rode makes. And yes, again, they do have a lightning version so you can plug it straight into your phone. But what if you want to upgrade your audio even further? You might be looking at, I don't know, a USB microphone, much like I did. I have one of those. This is the Shure MV51. I kind of got it because it's cool looking, but it also has a whole lot of fun onboard touchscreen style settings that you can use. This is typically mounted to a stand like this or an arm like this, but for these purposes, I kind of ran out of those things, so I'm just gonna hold it up to my mouth. When it comes to microphones like this, the best thing that you can do to improve your audio quality is get them close to your mouth. So let's go ahead and switch over to this audio and you can see if there's any improvement from our Rode Video Micro. And here is the audio from the Shure MV51. This is a plug and play style USB mic. It also comes with a cable that allows you to plug it into your phone so you don't need to have a fancy camera or computer program or anything like that. If you just want to use this in conjunction with your phone for the video purposes, you can absolutely do that. And again, putting it far away from my mouth and bringing it much closer to my mouth. Hopefully you can see how to properly use these type of microphones because they, they really do perform better when they're up close to your face. I'd say 
no more than six inches away, 45 degrees off the corner, so you don't get so many of those plosives. I'm sure you can see the difference there. Just a little bit of difference in your mic placement is going to go a long way with these. But what if you want to upgrade even further? What if the, the gas really has you and you have a big budget and you really want to spend? Well, you might be looking at a shotgun microphone, something like this guy right here. This is a Sennheiser MKH-416. It is not cheap. These guys cost almost $1,000. And these guys run off of an XLR input, not USB. This is familiar to anybody who has audio gear or equipment of any kind, but that can't just plug into a computer. Doesn't work that way. You need an interface to do so. You can spend anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars on an interface, but I'm not going to go over interfaces right now. We're just talking about microphones and the results that we can get from them. So let us go ahead and upgrade our audio again from, well, I don't know, upgrade our audio from the $200 USB mic to the $1,000 shotgun microphone and see what kind of results we get. And here we are. Now we are on the MKH-416. How does it sound? If I get it closer, it probably sounds fantastic. I do love this microphone. It's great for a lot of different purposes. But this isn't the purpose that most of us want it for. We want video. We don't just want to record audio. This isn't just a podcast, right? So what we'd really be getting a shotgun microphone for is to mount it out of frame or boom it just over our heads and out of frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that manually and we'll see how the sound changes here. Okay, there we go, MKH416 just out of frame. It's boomed, pointing down basically at my chin or my chest. And how does this sound? Is this a notable upgrade? Is it worth going to something like this for you to get away from the USB microphone that has to be kind of close to your mouth to sound really great? I don't know. All I do know is that this is getting heavy. <laughs> and as it gets heavy, I got to point out the room noise. I know there's a little more room noise going on here. I've done the tests. I've listened to it on the headphones. There just is because these type of microphones are great. Okay, I'm putting this down. I can't do it anymore. These type of microphones are fantastic when you have a microphone operator or if you're recording outside. Uh, you've heard this thing... If you've watched any type of movies or TV shows, you've heard this exact microphone. It's used in countless applications like that. But in a recording space like this, this is going to be space specific. Only you know how your space sounds. I'm in the corner of a garage. We got concrete floors. There's no sound treatment on the walls. And sound tends to bounce around a bit in here. And a shotgun microphone that isn't suited for your type of recording space might actually not be the best option for you, even if it is super expensive and crazy high quality because it's gonna pick up more of the room noise around you. It just might pick up more noise than you want it to, especially if it's not a private space and you're sharing with other people. So let's go ahead and I don't wanna say upgrade, but let's go ahead and switch style of microphone. This is a, a shotgun condenser microphone. Now we're going to go to a more radio broadcast style dynamic microphone. And these do really good close to your mouth. And we're going to switch over to this audio right now so you can see how it sounds. And here we are. I love this microphone, this sound for my space. This particular mic is an Electro Voice RE20 with the, I don't know, it has the, the, the big old cage with the shock mount and all that stuff so I can kind of move this around and not pick up too much outside noise. But you can you can shrink down the footprint of this thing pretty small by taking it out of this cage and putting it onto a stand like this. Uh, and you can, you can kind of float it right below you there. But the main point of this video is audio quality. So do you want to sink your money into a camera that really doesn't have any audio capabilities and make video that looks like this, but sounds like this? 
I'm not so sure if that many people are going to want to stick around for the long haul, especially if you're making content that's more than 20, 30, 40 seconds long. Or would you rather just use your phone, save the cash that you would spend on cameras and lenses and all that stuff, and invest in your audio in order to get a result that looks like this, but sounds like this? Or let's say the shotgun microphone is the answer for you, and you can get this guy completely out of frame and get your videos to a point that are looking like this and sounding like this. This is my, again, iPhone 12 Pro shooting the video, and the audio you're hearing is coming from the Sennheiser shotgun microphone. There are so many options for you when it comes to getting your videos to look and sound a certain way, and there's no magical combination. The right answer is different for everybody. And it depends on the type of content you're making, the speed at which you want to make it, the platforms that you're posting on, how you're recording them, and even the topics that you're talking about. But I really do feel like audio is more important than video quality within video content. Because think about yourself. How do you watch video? I know how I watch video and often I'm not looking at the video. I'm listening to the message that's being delivered. And that is where enhanced, improved audio quality is going to help you stand out. What do you think? Do you agree? Was this whole thing just a silly excuse for me to be able to play with my microphones? Maybe, but hopefully it brought you value also and gave you something to think about when it comes to your next audio video purchase. If you want to see a list of everything that I have in the studio here, go ahead and go to the link in the description below or in the comments, depending on what platform you're watching this on. I have a kit.co, I'm pretty sure it's kit.co uh, page set up where it's going to list absolutely everything that I have, everything that I use or don't use and have had in the past. There's going to be links to purchase them. Those are not affiliate links. I don't benefit from those. So feel free to do your Google searches and and, and use your Honey plugins or, or whatever the heck you're doing to get the best deal you can get from wherever you get it. Hope this helped. Audio quality, I really do feel like it's the best way to go when it comes to upgrading your gear. Start with the audio and then maybe move into the video later. And fun fact, audio equipment is usually way cheaper than video equipment. As expensive as this microphone is, it's not as much as the camera I'm shooting on. And that doesn't include the lens that's attached at the front of that camera. So think carefully. I know that we're heading into some tough financial times in a lot of ways for a lot of people. And every little dollar spent really does mean something. So let's consider where it should be spent. If you want to upgrade the gear, maybe think about looking at audio first.